Hi everyone, this is your Chess Puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. First of all, Merry Christmas to all of you. With a huge number of competitions, you will see me bounce from one tournament to the other. Looking at the 2017 King Salmon Rapid, we had already seen some huge surprises. Starting from round one, with Carlson's great defeat by China's Pew, to the game I'm, I'm featuring today. This is the game between Vashila Graf and Adiban, which is a bit of a strange game because Adiban uses Vashila Graf's own medicine against him. Anyone who goes for the Sicilian against Vashir is always in for some treat because if there is anyone out there on the entire planet who knows the Sicilian inside out, it has to be this guy. Let's look at this game in some detail. Vashila Graf White started up with e4 and Aliban uses MBA's own weapon to go against him. Through knight f3, d6 and bishop b5, MVO went for the Rosolimo. It is quite an extremely popular opening choice for such type of players. Blocking with the knight led to a very popular response in today's approach to the Sicilian a4, which brings about the Moscow variation. Aliban wanted the bishop away and attacked him, and as a result, the bishop retreated. With knight f6, knight c3 to cover, and now b6, the idea is to get the bishop out to create some pressure on e4. Castles got the bishop out, and now e4 was covered without having to get anything like d3 in. Having come up with this g7 initiative, Aliban wanted to confuse Vashila Graf, but this did not stop him from going for d4. And now with the exchange, the bishop came out on the other diagonal, getting ready for a likely kingside castle. Vashila Graf went for the top move in this variation and attacked this knight on f6. After castles, MVO lined up the queen on d2, and maybe now we're going to see an attack through bishop h6 to force off the bishops. Adiban made use of his c file by attacking this bishop. Now, a queen move to e2 is good enough to remedy the situation, but MVO opted for this bishop move. Rather than letting the bishops come off, Adiban got his queen in and now through rook d1. Adiban came up with a very aggressive move. He attacked the knight on d4. Now this knight can easily find safety on f3, or maybe a better outpost would be here on e2. In fact, if you ask if this knight can find b3, this looks absolutely fine. But MVL said no to all of these suggestions and chose to go for another option. Any ideas on what he went for? in two, one, and pause. He sacked his knight by placing him on b5. Or shall I say, he better offered the knight, but since Adiman took this knight, we can classify this as a sacrifice. Having recaptured by attacking the queen was the main idea of this knight sacrifice, but how was Envio going to get back into the game? And this is how he did it. After the queen moved to b8 to protect her bishop, once the bishops came off, the knight removed d6 and now forks both the queen and rook. Queen c6 led to the rook being taken and now with a recapture, this is what we have on the board. White has an awful more pawns than black, but would you prefer to have the white or black pieces? In either situation, this position may just look equal. With MVO to move, he went for this b3, leaving c2 hanging. So what happens if you take, and did Adiman take c2? Taking c2 will get you done because after the rook moved to c1, I'm sure you can figure this one out. Either the queen is gone or the queen and rook will go. 
in either case, this game goes to white. Coming back, Adiman never went for C2 and got his knight into the action, or a K near where the action is. F3 protected E4, and now with a consecutive knight move to E6, Envia was looking at how to protect this bishop on G5. He returned the bishop to E3, and now the only problem black has is with his own bishop on G7, who is isolated from the game, with the bishop now being unable to get into G5. Adiban is now able to relocate this bishop to F8, but did he go for such a move? He did. And now MVL got his own king out of G1, because he didn't want to trade in his bishop. Adiban went for H5, and now with the queen being repositioned to F2, it was time to do something to protect B6. Adiban went for a bishop move, and now with C3, Bishop takes and rook recaptures. Adiban decided to go for this little gem. He attacked b3 and now MVL seems to be in some type of trouble. If you attack this knight, a4 falls. MVL went for a queen move. And now with h4 and rook back to e1, maybe to allow the queen to get active on the king's side, Adiban went for a king move, blocking now the axis of the queen to anywhere near h6 and way before MVL got the chance. Rook d2, knight h5, with the idea of using e5 to get into f4, led to the other rook to come in on d1, and what a better move than this knight move to e6 to stop the rook from penetrating to the back rank. The rook attacked the queen, but what stopped Adiban taking on c3? Nothing. Having gone for c3, the exchange led to b6 coming off, and now when the knight got deeper into the game, could MVL do anything to stop him? Don't let the two rooks scare you when you have two extremely strong knights on the board. For starters, the rook on d1 is neutralized and do expect b3 to fall anytime soon. MVL went for it here. He pushed on with a5, but could he make it in one piece to the other side? After rook c2, Adiban has an excellent resource, but can you find it here in 2, 1 and pause? What you're looking for is this knight move to f4, and once this move kicked in, MVL was in real trouble. MVL tried his last attempt. He went for the very desperate a6, but after Adiban produced the finishing touch, this was it. Any ideas on what Adiban went for in 2, 1 and pause? h3. And now by taking h3, the knight simply took on f3, and this was good enough to force MVO to resign. Taking f3 is going to lead to a mate in 2 through rook c1, rook back to f1, and now rook takes, and his job done. This was a magnificent game by Adiban, who used an opening, or if you like, used MVO's own medicine against him to go for an opening where Maxim Vashilagraf is considered to be the only one who knows the ins and outs of every single possible variation of the Sicilian. I hope you enjoyed. In the meantime, plenty of more to follow soon. This was your Chess Puzzler.